for this meeting was duly posted. Every all council people are here as soon as they get here. So if you'll stand, our assistant city manager Scott Elmer leads us on the pledge of allegiance. Please join me in the pledge of allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we didn't uh, just uh, take a couple of minutes of silence for all of the uh, people that uh, were killed in Santa Fe, that's awfully close to our city. I make it so all we all think about that. I think when it happens, and especially when it's that close. And so, you know, for those eight students and those two teachers, uh, I'd like for us just to observe a, you know, a few seconds of silence for them. Very good, thank you. You know, we uh, operate this city with a lot of volunteer help, and uh, we have boards and commissions, and tonight we're going to swear in uh, two of our swear at two of those people that have decided to uh, serve our city uh, in a capacity. So I would ask uh, James Bailey and James Norcom to come up here and uh, be sworn in. Or sworn at. I don't know which it is. <laughs> I'll ask you to raise your right hand, and then I'll say aye, and then you'll state your name, and then we'll go from there. Aye. James Norcom. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of. The duties of. When are you so landing zone? There you go. Uh, out of the state of Texas. Of the state of Texas. Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve. Protect. And defend the Constitution. And defend the Constitution. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I have some proclamations to read. This one says that whereas more than five million people worldwide suffer from the devastating effects of lupus, and each year another 100,000 men, women, and children will be diagnosed with this disease. It is two to three times more prevalent among African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, and Native Americans. And whereas lupus is a chronic autoimmune disease, it causes inflammation of various parts of the body, particularly the skin, heart, joints, and kidneys. Lupus research shows that 1.4 million Americans have been diagnosed with lupus and strikes women about nine times more frequently than it does men. And whereas lupus impacts more than just the life of the patient, it affects the patient's family, friends, co-workers, employees, and community. And whereas the Gibson Lupus Research Center, serving the Houston area and surrounding cities, was founded as a nonprofit organization to alleviate suffering from lupus patients through patient and family services, achieve early detection of undiagnosed cases through awareness promotion, and achieve the eradication of lupus by supporting lupus research. And whereas early diagnosis and proper treatment are critical to the improvements of the quality of life, increased public awareness, education, and research are the key to winning the battle against lupus. Now, therefore, I, Alan Owen, on behalf of the council and all the citizens of Missouri City, do hereby proclaim 
May of 2018 as Lupus Awareness Month and extends heartfelt wishes to the Gibson Lupus Research Center for success and their core objectives in the future. I think someone's here to receive this, I think, or was. And, I, and this is very special to me because my, my sister died of lupus at age 25. So I, I know what effect it has. I thought somebody was here. Ms. Gibson? Yeah, Ms. Gibson? Christine Gibson. Christine Gibson, okay. We'll get it to them. Okay, Chief. Come on, Chief. Address that just for this. This proclamation says that uh, Texas hurricane season officially begins June 1 and ends, man, it's already on us, and begins no, and ends November 30th. And whereas the National Weather Service and the Governor's Division of Emergency Management have designated the week of May 6th through the 12th as Hurricane Awareness Week in Texas, and whereas the 624-mile Texas Gulf coastline areas of Texas Hundreds of miles inland, and our area in particular, are vulnerable to the devastating effects of a hurricane or a tropical storm, including heavy rainfall, inland flooding, high winds, tornadoes, and storm surges. And whereas the threat of life and the year-by-year -year increasing property damage from the destructive forces of hurricane and coastal flooding can be reduced dramatically by careful planning and timely implementation of emergency response and evacuation plans. And whereas the, be the best defense is preparedness and public education about the dangers of the high winds, the storm surge, flooding, and tornadoes that may occur for hundreds of miles in conjunction with a hurricane or a tropical storm. Now, therefore, I, Alan Owen, on behalf of the Council and the citizens of Missouri City, do hereby proclaim May 6th through 12th as Hurricane Awareness Week in the city of Missouri City, Texas, and urge all of the citizens of Fort Bend County, Harris County, and this community in particular to participate in hurricane preparedness activities and pay close attention to any warning instructions. So, Chief? Yes, sir. Now, I may want to make some comments. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that uh, awareness notification and uh, giving us this proclamation. Tonight, I'd like to publicly introduce Dakota Duncan. He's our new emergency manager. He not only has experience in governmental, but military services. And so I'm going to yield the mic to him so he can say a few words. D Dakota. Hi. Uh, as Chief Campbell mentioned, my name is Dakota Duncan. First of all, I want to thank uh, Mayor Owen and the council for, uh, for allowing me to be able to step aside such an awesome team and uh, faithfully serve the citizens here in Missouri City. Uh, just a quick moment here as we enter this hurricane season, just a simple three. Make sure you guys are staying warm up. Pardon me, staying aware of local weather conditions and the emergency evacuation plans in the county. Take some time to build a kit and don't forget any insurance information and pet information. And always have a plan for uh, evacuation and reconnection with your family. Thank you. Thank you, Very good. Thank you, Bob. That's it. I think we're all well aware of it. Yeah, I think we're all well aware of uh, what happens when we have heavy rain. So, Anyway, thank you all for doing that. This uh, last proclamation says, whereas public works services provides in our community or are provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the effective and efficient operation of public work systems and of programs such as water, sewers, streets and highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection. And whereas the health, safety, and comfort of the citizens of Missouri City greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of, this, of these facilities as well as their planning design and construction is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments are materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they all perform. 
Now, therefore, I, Alan Owen, on behalf of the council and the citizens of Missouri City, do hereby proclaim the week of May 20th through 26, 2018, as National Public Works Week in the city of Missouri City, and I call upon all the citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. So let's have all those public works people come up. As everybody comes up here, I just want to have a few words. Uh, thank you, Mayor and the Council, for this proclamation. I am surrounded by a very dedicated team of uh, Public Works employees. Uh, please give them a round of applause. Since 1960, the American Public Works Association has been sponsoring the Public Works Week just to highlight the importance of public works on the community. Again, these dedicated team of people impact the community and the quality of life every day here in Missouri City. Uh, again, there are very number of facets to public works. You could take engineering, you could take capital projects, you could take animal services, traffic, transportation, you name it. And I'm represented by this wonderful team here representing all the eight divisions of public works. Uh, the motto of this year's APWA is power of public works. Again, be transportation, getting clean water, you driving through this traffic signal smoothly, these guys make a difference. And I'll just highlight one of the things that this team did in preparation to Harvey, which the mayor witnessed, was uh, days in advance leading to Harvey, our fleet guys were refilling all the trucks for police, fire, and everybody here in the city. Our engineering and GIS team was preparing maps to identify potential evacuation roads and inundation maps so we can stage the areas and plan for evacuation. During Harvey, a lot of our public works team were embedded with fire and uh, uh, police doing rescue and evacuation. Even after ARI, two months after it, our GIS team was mapping out debris locations so we can remove debris from the front yard. So these guys are the people who impact everyday life here in Missouri City, and I'm very proud of my team and happy to be part of this public works team. Again, I thank the city council and the mayor for the support and I look forward to serving you in the coming years. Thank you. Barbecue Friday? That's what I want to know. We're having barbecue Friday. That's what I want to know. We're having barbecue Friday. <laughs> Scott, can you please come in? He is the, the framework of public works. Sorry, I forgot him, so he needs to come I'm going to get in front of Cliff. Right ahead. No, you just don't get over it. Yeah, you want to get over with the beauty. And you have to get in the back. Activities this week. Barbecue, I think. Friday, yeah. Had a lot of activities this week. All right, item four, public comments. This is an any, this is an opportunity for anyone to address council on any issue that's not an agenda item. Uh, let's see, Bruce. I want to thank the people of Public Works for getting River Ridge redone, <laughs> but your job is not complete. You still need to work your way down. There's still curbs that need to be done. You kind of did an overkill at my corner, and I appreciate that, but there's other parts of the subdivision that need attention. And furthermore, Mr. Owen, you promised to do something nice for Golda because you put double duty on her, putting her with animal control. 
You haven't done anything yet as of last week, so oh, yeah, you promised did. you promised her something nice to lunch or something, and I'm going to hold you to it. That we can't do, but I did write her a nice note. Did she okay. tell you and thank okay. her for it? Okay, and yeah. Mr. Wyatt, you know, the best thing I ever got out of Missouri City was my dog. The second thing is the street. So I would like, so you don't think I'm a terrorist, <laughs> I want you to have this chewed up tennis ball that my dog from the Missouri <laughs> City Pound did. <laughs> and you can play your tennis next time and maybe get you a new one. Wouldn't that be nice? So give, give the ball so I'll give it to the policeman. And he, can present, and he can present it to you. And you can and think of you. me every time. Thank and you can think me. of the animal control volunteers who saved my dog so he could chew that ball just for you so you could play tennis. All right. You had some other things. Did you want to wait on them? Yeah, I'll wait on them. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right, staff report. Good evening, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, say from the beginning that um, tonight's announcement uh, will be a little longer than, than normal because there's some uh, important announcements that I need to make. Okay. Did I, did I miss somebody or did you want to? You missed me, sir. But on 6C, that's an agenda item. So you'll be able to speak when we come to that agenda. Yeah. All right. Mayor, as most of you know, uh, there was a tragic uh, active incident on Friday with uh, Santa Fe High School near Galveston. Uh, it's a reminder that public safety, as I share it with my employee, is a top priority in all communities and that we must always rem uh, remain vigilant. Last week, our city hosted a mandatory active shooter uh, response training that was conducted by the police department. We continue to try to make sure that our employees are educated and prepared in the event something happens, but we always hope that that's not the case. As we mourn the Santa Fe victims, the city lowered uh, the uh, flags at half staff in their memory and our prayers are with the families and uh, the entire community. We ask that you please keep the victims and their families in your prayers uh, and stay safe. I would also like to remind everyone, as uh, the mayor earlier uh, shared with everyone, that hurricane season is around the corner. A few weeks ago, we sent out information on Hurricane Preparedness Week, and this week is Flood Awareness Week. So both of those impact our communities, and we want to make sure that uh, our citizens uh, and our employees are aware uh, and have the adequate information. We will also be uh, celebrating this week Public Works employees uh, as part of their National Public Works Week. Uh, the city of Pearland is hosting a number of activities for uh, Public Works employees throughout the region, and a number of our employees will be uh, going over there uh, to celebrate their dedication and hard work. The Veterans Memorial dedication will be held at American Legion Park on May 28th uh, at 10 a.m., uh, residents and stakeholders are encouraged or invited to this special dedication, and, and, and they actually will be unveiling uh, a memorial stone presented by the Missouri City American Legion Post 294. As part of the holiday, all of our non-emergency offices will be closed. This includes City Hall's front lobby, the inspections uh, and permits area, as well as municipal court and animal services. That's for Memorial Day. The Recreation and Tennis Center will be open for business from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., and the city's uh, Quail Valley Golf Course will be open for regular business hours from 6.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Also, residents who participate in the Municipal Solid Waste and Recycling Program will receive their regular service. Again, they will receive their regular service uh, from WCA uh, during the holiday. A number of quick reminders. Our CDBG scholarship applications are now available, and they are due on Thursday, May 31st. The second skate park excuse me, public input meeting it will be on Thursday, May 24th at 6 p.m. at the Recreation and Tennis Center. Uh, and the sixth annual summer youth camp or day camp sessions will begin on June 11th and will be held at the Quail Valley Elementary School for the first time. Again, won't be here at our community center, but it will be at the Quail Valley Elementary School for the first time. Also, uh, Houston Community College, we've been meeting with them. Uh, they are now accepting applications for the fall of 2018. Uh, 
I would like to thank the Missouri City Community Tennis Association. They donated 13 scorecards uh, for our tennis courts. Uh, Luke Parker, I think I put this on my uh, city manager's update, uh, and his local Boy Scouts troop, uh, I want to thank them for building and installing a dog ramp in the animal shelter's um, backyard as part of their Eagle Scout project. We also had an opportunity to uh, um, send uh, uh, congratulations to Chick-fil-A, who opened. Uh, they are the second largest Chick-fil-A footprint in the entire country. Uh, if you pass by on Highway 6, it's typically one of the larger footprints that are out there, and so we're gl uh, glad to have them in our community. Special kudos goes to the mayor for being part of the Fort Bend County Historical Commission's oral history. He was interviewed for how government uh, works. Uh, the Missouri City Police Department for coordinating their annual fallen officers memorial, uh, remembering the legacy of, the on uh, of honor. Uh, our fire team who did an outstanding job last week, not only for attending the Armstrong Elementary Career Day, but also hosting the Fire Station 3 open house and building an outside patio at Fire Station 3. I happened to attend that this weekend, and I, I think we had over 400 attendees at that particular meeting. Councilmember Boney was there, uh, and we're uh, very happy for the success of that event. I want to also thank our Employee Recognition Committee for planning a week of activities during Public Service Rec uh, Recognition Week, as well as uh, our Chief Performance Officer, Kathleen Weisenberger, and Sadie McCallum uh, for providing an overview for our third session of our Citizens University. Uh, this past week, we had a great event in hosting our Community Center Plaza Ribbon Cutting and Family Fun Night. I want to thank our Parks Team, Communications, IT, Kathleen and Sadie uh, for the tremendous job that they ended up doing. Also, a number of the council members that attended. We want to thank Council Member Wyatt and uh, Boney and uh, Council Member Anthony Maroulis for uh, coming out uh, for the event. And lastly, our communications team for hosting the second annual Mother's Day uh, cake decorating uh, event. May I end by, uh, and this is a different type of uh, update, uh, I've received a number of recent calls um, from citizens uh, asking questions about uh, uh, the city's treatment of medians. Uh, in our uh, on Highway 6 and other uh, highways, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to make an announcement to the to the citizens of our city is that we take that very seriously. But uh, medians of Highway 6, particularly one of the comments was uh, the decorated bricks. Uh, highway 6 is a state right away managed by uh, TxDOT, uh, and it should be also noted that Cartwright Road. Murphy Road uh, and Texas Parkway are all state-owned um, uh, uh, roads and not the responsibility of the city of Missouri City. It is important that residents know that the speed limit of Highway 6 currently is 55 miles per hour, which limits the options for landscaping, et cetera, that can be placed in the medians for safety reasons. We have shared these concerns with citizens but we, a lot of folks don't necessarily know that all of our major roads are the responsibilities of TxDOT. Um, most recently, there have been some questions about uh, our plannings and beautifications. Uh, I've, I've tried to send information out to the citizens that council invested $2.5 million for beautification that is underway. So over the course of the next six months, we ask that you please uh, look forward to a beautification project for not only Texas Parkway, but also for Cartwright Road. Uh, we take very seriously all of the beautification that's going on, and we hope that you can see some of that work that's going on in and around City Hall. Lastly, another issue that has uh, been uh, raised is uh, our traffic level for our waste removal and cleanup services. Just wanted to let everyone know that WCA is our provider, and we recently asked them to provide the total number of uh, pickups We've received over the course of the last several months, uh, I think over from uh, I think six months, 552,000 pickups, and of that number, we've received 172 complaints, which equates to less than one percent. Even with that number, we are very diligent in working with that provider to ensure that whether it's 172 or 10, 
one is too many. So we're going to do our part to continually work with them uh, to make sure that uh, the, uh, the citizens understand that uh, our city being clean and the trash being picked up is a high priority, and we're working with our providers to make that so. That concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, item six on the agenda is consent agenda. And I know that I have someone to speak on item C, although we're going to postpone that ordinance, but Doc, we will still hear from you. So is there a motion to approve A and B on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Councilman Emery made the motion. Councilman Marulis made the second. All those in favor? Motion carries. And as I said, item C is uh, being removed from the agenda, but I do have Margot Benja would like to speak to that item. If I may recommend, because the item will be on the, the next agenda, or some future agenda, we can notify you when it is on the agenda. Let her speak now. Can she? No. Huh? If I remove this from the consent agenda? Then it's no longer an item, so she should have... Um, so what do we but need I guess to do? That would have been impractical. I just hate for her to come have to come back. I mean again, but how do we I, I think this does impact the whenever she signed up for it, six. It, it, it's That's what it. I have to yeah, say. That's what she signed relevant. up for. But so we Please. said no. No, no. You can't. no. But now that we remove it, doesn't we, that we remove it and it's not on the agenda. Then it's no longer on the agenda. Okay. Then can I speak as a concerned citizen? So then the it was not an, an agenda item. She could go back and speak on the here from the public. Public comments. Public, public comments. Yeah. Yes. Let her speak from the public comment section. Just, there you go. Should I wait till later or is now okay? No, if you want to come back, that's fine. Or you, I'll let you speak now under the well, I'm comments be, from I'm the general public. I'm going to be quite, quite brief. Uh, two points. First of all, it's my understanding just of the... Just have the name and address so we've got that okay, for record. Okay, Margo Binge. 2722 North Doral Drive. Uh, first of all, it's my understanding of state law that this, as I have read it and as I have consulted with others, is in violation of state law. So that's a, an important thing that you may need to take a look at. The second, and the thing that I really want to bring to your attention, is you already have a lot of teeth that's not being used. And what I did for you, because I'm going to keep to my three minutes, is this little blurb up here deals with what the state law says about passing more restrictive things regarding massage therapy establishments. The second part down here details how the city attorney or peace officers can take action. Now, you don't have to wait for an ordinance. So it really just boils down to if you want to do something, you can do it now if you have a problem. And so I think if you would consider tabling the ordinance until you've done some more research, that might be an excellent idea. That's why we pulled it off the agenda. All right, very good. Thank you. Item seven are public hearings and related actions. There are no zoning public we hearings. Need, we need to vote on the. Uh, huh? We didn't I thought vote we voted on. on the did we vote on the other two? We got a motion, oh, we but we didn't vote. Six A and uh, B. B. No. All right. I'm sorry. All those in favor, A and B. <laughs> Glad you remind me. I thought we'd already voted on it. All right. Uh, seven B. There are no public hearings and related actions. Uh, eight. There are no appointments tonight. Nine are authorizations. 9A is to consider authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement for the reconstruction of Independence Boulevard, Segment 1, and Staffordshire Road. Move to the Second. Not you guys just all jumping in there. Council Wide made the motion. Council Boney made the second. Is there a discussion? Not with vote. All those in favor? Motion carries. Item 9B is consider authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement for the materials testing services required for the reconstruction of Independence Boulevard, Section 1, and Staffordshire Road. Is there a motion? Move to adopt. Councilman Boney made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Councilman White made the second. All those in favor? Motion carries. 
Item 9C is considered authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute an agreement for veterinary services for Missouri City Animal Shelter. Move to the second. All right, hang on. <coughs> Councilor White made the motion. Councilor Boney made the second. Bruce wanted to speak from this item. About, about to overlook it, and it dawned on me. I think it's important that you support the animals of Missouri City. A couple people on here tried to um, badmouth some of the volunteers, whatever. I don't know all the politics of it, but I think you need to say you're sorry to some of the volunteers and put through a motion to provide the well-being for the animals of Missouri City. You do other things for other parts of the city, you can help the animals too. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. And then 9D is consider approval and authorization for the final community development block grant 2018 program year annual action plan. I think it should be approved, especially to you, Mr. Wyatt, for what you did in Glen Park, telling people that they need to keep current on their dues and their subdivision fees. Uh, Missouri City needs more parks and recreations for other parts of the city besides Quail Valley golf courses and tennis. So I think block grants may be a source of maybe the people to get extra things for their own little communities. And you just can't always depend on subdivision dues because, you know, well, let's face it, you know, you bailed out Quail Valley with all their things, so you can kind of help the rest of Missouri City. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tonight we are here to present the final recommendation for the Community Development Block Grant for Program Year 2018's Annual Action Plan. As you are aware, the city has received an award funding from the U.S. Urban Housing and Urban Development in the amount of $272,007. Um, for the programs for our upcoming year. The Community Development Advisory Council has forwarded the following recommendations for the action plan to be submitted to HUD. Funding allocation as adjusted in our continual action. Under public service activities, the first item is for Fort Bend Seniors Meals on Wheels in the amount of $10,200. Also, child advocate in the amount of $10,200. The city's educational and scholarship program in the amount of $9,975. Edison Arts program in the amount of $10,426. Under non-public service activities, the recommendations are for Hunter's Glen HOA Park Improvement Project in the amount of $37,000 housing rehabilitation program in the amount of $92,804 with 60 cents. The city's code enforcement program in the amount of $47,000 and the city's administration program with a 20% cap in the amount of $54,401.40. So tonight we're here to accept the approval and the recommendation and ask council to authorize the city manager to sign the grant agreement to submit to HUD. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move that we adopt the agreement with the exception of Hunters Glen Park and that that money be reallocated to the most blighted area that we have in this city along 5th Street. And any funding left remained in that will go to infrastructure. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I guess my concern is we how many applicants have we had for housing rehabilitation? Public service applicant or non public service? No, non public. For this year? Yeah. For non public service, we have one applicant other than the city's program. How many do we have waiting? For the housing rehabilitation program? Huh? Uh, we've we not have ever been able to do. 
We, for this year, we have um, 12 projects that we're under, that's underway, and we have 22 on our current waiting list. We got 22 But we homeowners. have funding for that. We have funding in 2014 funding. So they do have funding for those 22 applicants. So we've got, we have fulfilled, or will fulfill every single applicant who has applied for assistance. Currently, that's in, within our system right now, yes. Yeah, because, you know, I get concerned. I saw this devastation during Harvey, and, you know, we got people that can't even get back in their own homes. And especially in that area that Jerry is talking about, I don't know that they feel like they want to apply, but I just, I agree with Jerry. I, there's other areas of this city we need to take care of. And well, the city is receiving well, funding for like, Hurricane Harvey. I would, I would like to add, because... Part of my frustration is, is that the area that I'm talking about could be the most embarrassing area in this city. Yes. Period. And we can't expect those people to apply and fill out applications. We got to get out of the office and go find out what their needs are. They're not the type of people that's going to probably have a computer on every desk and, and what have you. And that's, that, there have to be some extension from city staff to explore these areas and make sure that we're getting money to uh, people that really need the money, need, uh, need those services. And sometimes we have to go ask and figure out what their needs are. I mean, we got tons of code enforcement problems down there. Uh, plenty of opportunity to help clean, clean up that area. And then I don't even know what their individual assessments are. And then I think also in the, in the future, we probably ought to have some guidance as to how we distribute this small amount of, amount of money. I, I looked at the education scholarships. Was, was that citywide or was that just to the CBG area? Because I was no, confused. No, that's citywide. Citywide. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I could live in Oak Wick Forest the city. Yes. and apply. Then I think we ought to have some guidance in terms of People who fall below the midpoint of the medium household income should get first priority. You know, we just can't, you know, if, if this money is supposed to be going to people that's needed, we need to make sure that we've got some guidance that it gets to the people that need it. Yes, that's why Missouri City is an exception, exemption city. So that's why they don't have to that, That's not a good excuse. We shouldn't take exception to use to, to benefit us. We should, we should make an exception and make sure that we get into the people that it really needs Did to go to. Did that community fall into the uh, census block to, to qualify? Yes. Or, okay. They're in Hunter's Glen, which is a uh -huh. target area. And they fell into the census block yes. that qualified them. Okay. The Fort Bend County is also an exemption city as well as Sugar Land, Pearland. So Missouri City is not the only, it's not the city decided the exemption, HUD decided the exemption. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying how we use it within the rules. Okay. That's different. As it relates to the projects themselves, if you look at actually the, uh, the plan, comprehensive plan for CDAC, uh, that particular project that uh, he was indicating needed to be reallocated ranked very low on the list of priority versus the Fifth Street in that area. So I think that for me, it makes sense to reallocate those dollars to an area that truly needs it and is higher on the priority list than that of uh, the park improvement program for an HOA, a private area. Okay, it is this council's discretion to, t to let us know what you know you would like to do with the funding. So we'll discuss it. And I know some of the some of this stuff is capped. I, I sit here and I look at you know we're we're giving ten thousand two hundred dollars to senior meals on wheels, and I know how many <laughs> seniors in this community depend on those meals every single day. But I know that. Public service activities is capped at 15% of the total funding. We're giving $10,000 to senior meals on wheels, 10,000 to CASA with all these kids that are abused, the scholarship we're talking about, and yet, you know, we give $54,000 of this money for administrative cost. <laughs> That's more than we give under public service activities total, and that's not right. And could you could you also speak to the liability aspect that the city would be under by allocating these dollars for the Hunters Glen project as far as 
um, they have to sign a contract with the city. Is that correct? And Council every, every subrecipient signs a contract. No, I'm saying as far as who can, who can actually go into the park, they would have to open it up to the public. Council Member, let me allow the city attorney to answer that question if you don't mind. And if I may just hop in with that, but yes, the, the entity would have to make the park public so that it fits within the guidelines of uh, CDBG uh, community block grant recipients. So they would have to make it public. I would imagine that in the contract or subcontract, if you all decided to do that, we would have language in that contract that would require the recipients to keep the park open to the public. And we would probably also include language, I would think, that would require some sort of repayment if anything changes with the investment of the, the uh, community block grant funding in the park or that prevents it from being open to the public. Would that only be for a short period of time or long term? I'm the, sorry? Would that be short period for like one year or? Would, would what be, be for a short period of The time? repayment or the obligation that they keep the park open to the public? I think, th I think that the use requirement is about five years. Mm -hmm. So they would have to keep it open to the public for at least that time frame. Um, be in charge of maintenance. Maintenance. The, the entity should be able to pay for maintenance. I don't believe that the funds can be utilized for maintenance purposes. Yes. Sir. Mayor, as part of the public process, um, this is part of the engagement process that HUD puts forth. Um, you've heard uh, over the course of the last several weeks feedback from citizens. We provided you with the CDAC's recommendation. At the end of the day, you're the final arbiter in this process, and you can make recommendations to accept it or modify it or deny it. Uh, what I would say to you is as we move forward, whatever your decision point is, we really need as we proceed in the consolidation plans in the upcoming year to really have an engaged discussion about high priority, mid priority, and low priority. Uh, maybe that's a joint meeting with the uh, CDAC meet, uh, uh, group. But I think as we move forward so that everyone's on the same page, is our focus going to be public service? Is our focus going to be infrastructure uh, related to parks, et cetera, or a particular area? All those things are discussion. I think we need to have that dialogue. But in the end, it is now your decision on what, where, where you want us to go, and we, we, we will uh, uh, deal with it accordingly based on that recommendation. And, and has the just community be made aware of the, the stipulation that the park has to be made public? I believe yeah. that was actually discussed at the, the okay. hearing, yeah, the hearing, and um, they were okay with that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. There was a motion. What was the motion again so we don't? Lose. Move to adopt it with the exception of uh, uh, replacing Fifth Street with Hunters Blen and any money left over to be used for infrastructure. And that was your second? Yeah. Okay. And a motion and a second? Have, uh, yeah. Yes. Has, infrastructure. has infrastructure been identified already? M Mayor, I would, I would suggest um, uh, Slum and Blight is an area uh, with well, the, I think or, and or in our infrastructure, yes. Okay. That's what we describe it as, a slum and blight. Okay. Slash I mean, I infrastructure. I was trying to keep from saying that because I, I don't want to be accused of being ugly. Whatever but, it takes but legally to make it work. the law says it's slum and blight, so we us call it that. Yeah. Because of the time um, element, we, we received the um, 272-007 um, from HUD last week, so we have 90 days from that period. So we do have sufficient time to take this back to the CDAC to and make identify. a final decision, if you would like. However... For the, for the purposes of the action plan, I think we need that clarity. Do you want the action of the CDAC involved in that, or do you want the city to participate or to um, apply for the infrastructure? Oh, that's what I think I've, uh, the council has stated, uh, but they can, uh, it's my understanding their decision is to reallocate the dollars, $37,000, to be uh, for slum and blight slash uh, infrastructure, and then at that point, the uh, uh, staff will go from there. Thank you. I think that's a motion. There's been a motion. Any other discussion? Yeah, I've got one, oh, okay. and, it's, and it's, it's real quick. It's not to change any of the action that we're taking, but the clarification on the educational assistance that we provide, you say that they don't have to live in the CDBG area? No. They can, is that something that's set by state or, how, or by HUD? Um, uh, any public service program is eligible to any resident in, in the city as long as they meet the criteria of the program. 
So what's the, okay. what's the criteria? You there's just, there's yeah. income eligibility criteria. They have to be a full-time student um, and be a resident. That's primarily those three responsibilities they have. Does that to also apply to the county as support that they get from CDB? The county has a separate program. And I know. So, they, so can they apply through the county? The county may not have a scholarship program. I'm not aware of but all of But if they do? If they do, they can. They can, Mayor. But I think, as we said earlier, we've made a decision in Missouri City on the, what our focus and uh, emphasis will be. In the past, it's been meals on, with the public service, meals on wheels, scholarships, uh, our code enforcement area. We've laid that out. As we move forward, there may be a discussion to say, do we want now to shift that to be infrastructure, to utilize uh, Section 108 loans and some other uh, uh, in, uh, uh, options to leverage the dollars that we have, or do we want more infrastructure-related projects? Those are discussions that the CDAC and this council can have, but at this point, we are operating based on the prioritization that or the areas of focus that this body and the CDAC is late, late, uh, late before us, and that's what we're operating on. This we program to, we is have to out. Yeah. in a plan, right? Sir, we have to do another plan, right? That's that's the upcoming plan. That's, that's when we do the upcoming plan. That's when we can put some guidance in it, and that's why I was suggesting that you know part of our guidance level ought to start at the medium household income which gives more priority to the people that versus at the high end. Okay. And okay. so we can talk about that later, but at least, at least there's some, some guidance. And there's no rule to say that we have to give scholarship money beyond the CDBG area. Yeah. You know, and and I, I just want to I, I, I just want to uh, make it uh, make it clear. I've been on this CDAC committee for about six years now. And this is the first time that this type of project has come before us. It's unprecedented. And so I voted to move it forward so that we can have a discussion as a council. Uh, and my reason for wanting to move it forward is because I wanted to get clarity. I never had that comprehensive plan. I'm new to council. So when I found out the priority levels and that this was a low priority versus that of Fifth Street and others, it made more sense to me to make sure that these funds were going in areas where we best need it. And not that this is not a worthy project. It's just at this particular time, right. I believe that Fifth Street is the best place to put these funds. And, and I guess my point is I think we ought to take a look and see whether or not we should be putting educational dollars just in the C CDBG area and not outside. Because no. that, that's if somebody from Riverstone could apply. They meet the criteria. You know, they could get a right. scholarship. And I'm not holding anything against <laughs> Riverstone or Cuevall or any place else. It's but the need. it's CDBG, and to me, that's you know, should go to the area where uh, it's uh, there's a, there's a real need. So this vote. Well, and I know that CDBG is on the chopping block. We may not get anything next year because it's it's been targeted as one of those areas in the federal government that may go away, and it's less this year than it ever has been. I mean, we're down to 272. It's been over $300,000 before, so it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, anyway, there was a motion and a second. All those in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. All right. Item 10, ordinance is 10A. An ordinance of the City of Missouri City, Texas, establishing temporary maximum speed limits for certain school zones located within the city, designating locations, dates, and times for such school zones, providing for repeal, providing a penalty, providing for severability, and declaring an emergency. And this is to take care of schools getting out for the summer and changing those speed limits. So is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Marula, second by Councilman Quick Bowman. clarification, it's actually for summer schools. For summer schools, yeah. yeah. All those in favor? Motion carries. Item 11 or 11A. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Missouri City, Texas, authorizing the Mayor to execute and the City Secretary to attest to the tax abatement agreement bind between the City of Missouri City, Texas, Comcast of Houston, LLC, and AX Park 890 Cascom LP pertaining to certain personal property to be located on a 6.13 acre tract of land situated north of Buffalo Run Park, south of Highway 90A, east of Cravens Road, and west of the Sam Houston Tollway within reinvestment zone number 16 in the City of Missouri City, Texas. Is there a motion? Second. We discussed this one last time. This is a tax abatement. Any discussion? 
right, we'll vote all those in favor. Motion carries 11B. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Missouri City, Texas, ratifying the submission of a grant application to the Texas Department of Transportation for overtime activities by law enforcement to reduce the incidence of traffic injuries and fatalities and containing other provisions related thereto. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. You made that motion. Me. You did? Councilman Wyatt made a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, item 12, our city council announcements. Chris? Jerry? Uh, the next time that I see y'all, I will have been married 50 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. Join the ranks. <laughs> I'll keep praying for I'll your wife. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, uh is having their uh, Memorial Day parade, which. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know, Alan, you'll have put your big hat on and come out and uh, uh, oh, yeah. parade with the kids through the uh, the patio home. So we're looking forward to that. And it's not uh, just for folks in Quail Valley or in that area. So if anybody else wants yeah. to bring their kids and their wagon or their dog, uh, it's, a cute deal. It's, a, it's a great deal. Cute deal. Mayor Pro Tem? No. Continued prayers for Santa Fe. I celebrated my 44th birthday on this past oh, month, birthday. this right. past right. Monday, and my wife's birthday tonight. So I'll see y'all later. We got you out of here, so you get. Let me just say that I know that uh, most of us, and not I hope most of you, have gotten emails here in the last two days about power outages. And I obviously I I know about it probably as quickly as you do because I get an email from. <laughs> the general manager of Center Point. Let me just say you once again, those outages are being caused by trees that are in the power lines that are in a utility easement that they have the authority to cut the tree down if they really wanted to, even though it's in your backyard and it's the back eight feet of your property, that is a utility easement. And so Center Point has a hard time getting into people's backyards to cut the tops out of their trees where the lines go through it. But unless they do that, we're going to continue to have these power outages of these little blips because every time that limb touches that power line, it throws a candle fuse and shuts that transformer down, and it takes center point time to get out here to reset it. And I know people are upset. They're going to call the PUC, and they're going to do all this stuff. But I also know that center point has been going door to door in our neighborhoods, putting notices on people's doors that they're going to be in the neighborhood with Davy Tree Service, cutting those trees back, trimming them back, having sat for 10 days without power, knowing that a tree caused it. I've been there. So just bear with them. They're doing what they can. The trees have bushed out already. They've grown faster than probably expected, but Center Point knows where they are. They've identified. They went through this in uh, Lake Olympia, and they got those taken care of. They're now in Quail Valley, and they're in Hunter's Glen. They're in other areas of the city. If there's a particular area that you're having problems with, if you'll let me know, I will let Center Point know that they need to address that particular area, and they'll take care of it. But just kind of bear with us. I saw a tree down as I came here tonight in somebody's front yard from the wind and the rain, so we're going to have it. Be safe.